my name is Kerry Arth, and today we are going to do a range review for the Caradron Overlords, because my god, if this is not one of the best factions that Games Workshop have done, not just for the fact that they are in fact steampunk flying dwarves, but also... This entire range is like a gold mine for all the little awesome, silly, weird gubbins you need to turn anything else in Age of Sigma or indeed 40k, into some sort of steampunk dream. They are so good for this, it's unreal. Of course, it is very helpful that their entire aesthetic is weird steampunky things, but everything is just so beautifully applicable to so much else if you want to say say for instance say for instance you want a particularly a particularly weird archaic tech priest well you could do worse than starting with uh with brock G grungson i hate the names i really don't like them they are so hard to pronounce who is the uh the lord magnate of baragnar this guy essentially i mean just just look at him you take the dwarf off that you do a bit of green stuff cabling around a uh, around a. I mean, you didn't have to be a tech priest. You could get someone in power armor. You could get you could get Stormcast Eternal if you wanted to keep the kind of baroque archaic theme going on. You can do so much just with this one dude alone. I mean, he comes with as you can see the big weird floaty metal balloon of whatever it is. How these guys work, I'll be honest, is a little bit of a mystery to me. All I know is I love the design of them. And, I mean, just look at this guy. Look at this one dude alone. This guy is worth his price just for the amount of random gubbins you get. You want to make weird ad mech transports? You absolutely can. You want to do something mental with... I mean, hell, you could stick stuff like this on some sort of really, really quite uh, tech heretical uh, space marine force. But still, you can stick them on anything. They are, admittedly, super good for ad mech. Um... I feel like you could probably take Admech heads and uh, and a lot of the stuff from these guys and stick them on pretty much any Age of Sigmar model and end up making it some kind of some kind of proxy for something or other. Um, I, I I have to admit the one thing that I'm not keen on with these guys is it's it's the helmets because the beards are perhaps a bit much for me personally. I like everything else, and to be honest, it's not really that big a deal. It's just the occasional one I like less than others. Like, for instance, this guy, I like everything about his model pretty much. The only thing I'm not sure about is the beard. The top hat is hilarious. Keep the top hat all day. Um, but yeah, there's just the occasional thing here and there. Overall, though, it's a super... It, this is like a super solid model. Got loads of really cool little parts and gubbins. I mean, when you look at this, when you look at the sprue, it's like... You could build the entire thing without the guy attached and do whatever the hell you liked with it. It's 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 so good. It's such a such a good model and that goes for a lot of this like a lot of this stuff. So the uh the etheric navigator here again there's just so many bits and pieces on this dude. If you're going for a particular theme, you can absolutely just you can just cannibalize this entire force. Like, the, the power pack, the backpack on this dude, is quality. I would love to use that for some sort of particularly weird tech marine, or like the, the, the Steam Cast Eternals force that I've ended up making out of the Mortal Realm stuff. Really, the Caradron Overlords are absolutely ripe for taking stuff off these and putting them on Stormcast, if you want to make them a bit more technological and stuff. Some of it is a bit unwieldy, some of it's a bit bulky. I will say the, this Navigator is a bit... It looks like he's carrying more stuff than he is as a person, if that may... I, I don't, I don't, no, that's a terrible way of phrasing that. It looks like he's carrying more than his own body weight in extra crap, uh, which is... It's a look, if you like it. This isn't my favourite model of the range, but again, there are some cool things on here. You know, even if even though even the models I'm not massively keen on, there's still so many gubbins you can nick off them. It's unreal. This being a prime example, this is not a model I'm massively keen on. But like the staff looks quality, the massive power pack is cool. I mean, you could nick the the weird orb thing for all sorts of stuff. And again, the way that it's the way that it's laid out, it's super easy to cannibalize. Now, I really like this guy, the uh, the ether chemist. I really like this model for some reason. 
he he looks chunky and he looks he looks bulky. He's like he's carrying a decent amount of equipment, but it doesn't look like he's going to fall over from it. Admittedly, the backpack is like twice the depth of the last guy, which <laughs> maybe does make him look a little back heavy, I guess. But then look at the size of the guy's boots. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to fall over. Look at him. That yeah, I mean that is that is a cool model. I do like that a lot. I really like his like extra sort of technological helmet he's got where the beard is all pipes and he's got like multiple lenses and stuff over one eye. It's a cool touch. It's cool. It looks good. This I think is probably in terms of like the individual models, I think this is my this is my second favorite. So this is the uh, the engine master and uh again I really like the style of this guy, the massive hammer that he's got, that's got like the cog in the center, and half of it is like a like a massive wrench. It's a really cool touch. But the the, the crowning achievement has got to be the the half anvil, half exhaust. Like I, it, at first it looked like a gun, which I thought was quality, but then it, I don't think it is. Um, but like the the massive anvil backpack, the fact that he's got those extra arms. Attached to his uh, attached to his shoulders to help him swing the massive hammer of death. The tools hanging off the back are a really cool touch. As are the little pressure gauges. I love little pressure gauges like that. They're, they're great little gubbins to stick on tanks and mechs, and there's just not enough of them about. But yeah, it's a really cool model. This one. I also particularly like the almost like gas mask addition to the uh, the helmet that he's got and the visor that like swings down over the eyes. It's, it's really nicely done. It is really good. Now, my favourite of the individual models has got to be the Arkanaut Admiral. I th this guy just looks solid. Just looks absolutely solid. I would argue that of all of the kits here, he's probably one of the ones who is least, uh, like, cannibalizable. That's not a word. It, probably the most difficult to get individual bits off. He's a very solid, chunky model with not much in the way of individual gubbins. But he just looks like an absolute badass. He's got like a quilted leather collar, very, very, uh, very, very pimp. Um, <laughs> his massive hammer is like chain driven to spin, which is awesome, and it's a drill on the other end. I mean, what more could you possibly want? It's like proper multi-barreled gun in the other hand, it looks really cool. It's just such a cool model. It is such a cool model. Oh, excuse you. This website has taken a real disliking to uh, <laughs> to clicking in the wrong place. But yeah, it looks super good. It looks really good. I mean, looking at his sprue, it is like it's it's quite a cut and dry model in a way. There's not a huge amount to salvage, as I said. But I mean, I, I don't know. I just think it looks really, <laughs> really solid. Now, these guys, Thundrix Profiteers, are. I love this kit. I love this kit. It's not very expensive. It's like what, seventeen fifty, I believe. Uh, fifteen pounds, sorry, fifteen. Um, I mean, fifteen quid for these five. They are a veritable like like cornucopia of random bits. Like the bits off these guys have ended up on all sorts of stuff for 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 several things for me. Um, like the I haven't even assembled these guys as. As Thundrix profiteers, so this guy, his big, his big steering, his big rudder went on my uh, my chapter master dreadnought as like a big heat sink thing, just because I thought it looked cool. His backpack went on another dreadnought. His little like canister that's hanging off the side, I managed to carve off and put on. I think another dreadnought. The big, the big canister on his uh, on like on top, the thing that makes him float. That went onto one of the weird ambots that I made that I turned into, into uh, like essentially proxies for tree lords. Um, like that went on one of them, which suited perfectly, like suited really well. The harpoon head of his spear that went onto my chapter master dreadnought. There's just so much stuff. This guy's backpack went onto one of my D and D characters, and the gun went onto another enemy that I made for it. The thing is, I've still got all the bodies. Like, the bodies are still totally usable. Even when you take away things like the guns and the backpacks, the bodies are still fine. Like, you can still do stuff with them. It is such a good kit for random bits. The backpacks are super easy to, to get hold of, like, to, to put on other stuff. The guns are really easy to adapt and attach to other things as well. And you're still left with the bodies. And 
they're done in such a way that you can still use the bodies for whatever you want. Like, they're just going to end up being normal dwarves for me. Like, I'm going to use them for D&D stuff, but they're just going to end up as, like, heavily armoured dwarves. That's all they're going to end up as. And I've still, like, got more than, like, the value that I'd look for out of uh, out of a nice out of a nice box of bits components from the rest of the stuff that they've got. It's a really good kit. And the thing is, even if you do build them normally, like, you get a, you get a decent feel, like, a decent feel for a kit. I think when you go through it, when you go through it, like, painstakingly trying to work out exactly what bit you can use where um like looking at the sprues and stuff super easy to assemble as well super easy to assemble i mean you can hopefully you can see what i mean with the guns and stuff like just taking the arm off you can leave the entire body intact all these little random bits these random kind of pressure gauges and and like the the, the backpacks they have and the kind of extra bits that go on those backpacks they're so they're so good. It's such a good kit. I absolutely love it. I literally bought it because I was like, I think I could use quite a lot of what's in here, but I'm not sure. But then again, from Element, it was like, I'm you know, it's fifteen quid, so it was like thirteen fifty or something. I already had other stuff ordered, and I went, well, it's a bit more than a tenner, and I can, I'm sure I can use most of it, and I've used like half of the sprues without even putting any of the guys together. Super good. Super good. Although, I think these guys have gone... Yeah, they have. They've gone direct only, so you can't get them from third-party retailers now, which is a bit... a bit garbage. Because it cuts down on the, uh, on, like, the... just the kind of bits value of them when it, when it happens like that. When they, when they put stuff like this so that you can only get it from the, uh, Games Workshop web store, of course you lose that extra kind of... that extra sort of 10 to... 10 to 25% discount that you get from getting it from third-party stockists, which is a bit of a pain. A bit of a pain, for sure. Now, these guys, the Sky Riggers, again, I've not bought this kit myself, but this is another one where, you know, looking at the sprues, there's so much, so much random gubbins that you can use for so many different things. There's a good variety of, of like, weapons, and you've got little drill guns and stuff like that. They do look good as individual models, I will say, as well. They, they look really cool. They've got a... I don't know. They have like quite an aggressive feel to them. I don't know whether it's the uh, like the harpoon pistol combination, and of course the awesome looking little Gatling gun there. But they have they have like a like an attitude to them that I really like. I think it might be the addition of like the floating mines coming off the the sides of their 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 etheric flotation devices. Probably not what they're called, but these models do look really really good. But then, I think that goes for pretty much all of the character and Overlord's range. Even the stuff that I'm not, like, massively keen on. I don't think it looks bad. It just doesn't look as good as some of the other stuff in the range for me. It also feels like a range that isn't very bloated, which is which is nice. I mean, more choice is always good, but there's not a huge number of models in this range, but it feels like they got all of them right, whereas some of the larger ranges, you, you start to get like a little... You, like, you get a bit of bloat, and you get things that just don't really hold up to some of the other stuff. That is not the case with these guys. Of course, they're a relatively new... I'm, gonna say, I'm just pointing out relatively, relatively new faction. It's been like three years at this point, I think, but still. In the grand scheme of uh, Games Workshop models, three years old is still relatively new, especially when you've got stuff from like third edition of 40k still hanging around. God damn. But yeah, these guys look cool. I do like these. Also got the uh, the Grundstock Thunderers, which I just love the sheer like variety of weaponry on these. <laughs> They've all got guns, and the guns all look slightly different. I also like the the helmets on these guys, even though the top does look a bit. I don't know why it reminds me of like firefighters, not UK firefighters, like US firefighters. I don't know why. They do look good though, and just the <laughs> the sheer variety of weapons is quality. I want to know what that one's firing. That it's got like a is it like energy shots or something? Either way, he's got a good spread. He's got a good spread of uh, projectiles there out of that thing. Yes, yeah, like they've all got something slightly different. They've all got like a slightly different gun. The one with the big shield on the end is is quality. Also, the ma <laughs> the massive like <laughs> stick grenade thing 
is a work of genius. Mad genius. I do like the inclusion of the uh, bionic leg as well. That's a nice touch. They do look good. They do look good. Oh. They got you also your regular, just your regular lads, your Arkanaut company, which, again, I do like them. They're, they're, they're like solid looking infantry for me. They, they have a nice balance between kind of overalls and, uh, and armor. So they still look, they still look pretty hardy. Uh, they still look pretty, pretty capable of taking a hit. It's all the customization on the weapons as well that I really like. It's kind of a lot of it, like feels like it's carried over from like traditional dwarves, but there's all these extra bits on them, all these extra kind of gubbins and backpacks. And I mean, people wanted squats back, and uh, you you got them. You just you just got them for the wrong the wrong game is the problem. Didn't get them for forty k. Definitely got them for uh, <laughs> for Age of Sigma. Right down to the fact they've got power packs on the packs. They do look good though. That massive harpoon launcher is quality. I really like that. I really like that gun. It looks great. There's also the uh, Endrin Riggers, which I believe is the same kit as the other flying dudes. And I, again, I do quite like them. I do quite like these. They don't have quite. I don't know what it is. They're just not quite as uh, as aggressive looking as the others. But I can't really work out why. I think maybe it's something to do with the weapons that they're holding. I think the underslung like knives that these guys have don't quite have the same visual impact. I think is probably what it is. They still do look good though. They still do look good. And I do like the uh the helmets on these guys, like the big kind of gas mask thing they've got going on with the like the beard that kind of comes down around it. It's a nice touch. It looks cool. Also like the the kind of what's like uncut uncut stone like uncut gem in the eye socket of that one is funky yeah they're, they're cool they're, they're, they're good looking good looking models now of course three of the best models of the entire range are <laughs> are the uh like the gunships the airships the mad absolutely what is going so this is the grunstock gun hauler and uh, i love this thing I absolutely love this. It is a flying, it is a flying ship with a massive gun on the front and a smaller gun behind it. What more could you possibly want? I love the little propellers on the side. It's just so mental. All the bombs hanging off it. It's just so many little details. It looks really, really cool. And of course, if you wanted to use it for any number of other things, you absolutely could, because. Funnily enough, it is rife with little little bits and pieces. And there's so many nice little touches on it. Like even the fact the propellers have got a bit of ornamentation on them. I have a couple of times seen like a, a kind of criticism of well those propellers wouldn't work. I mean also neither would that. Look at it. <laughs> what what even is it? What's how does it It's a it's a flying it's a flying ship. Uh, I think realism is kind of out of the window as soon as uh as soon as you put one of these down, frankly. Then again, it's Age of Sigma, who cares? Same goes for 40k, really. Believability and realism aren't the same thing. That is, I'd, I'd say that's pretty believable. You know, it's got a giant thing above it. Looks like it'd fly to me. Yeah, looking at the uh, looking at the sprues as well. Like, there's, I love the, like, the, the just variety and stuff in the, in the bombs that can be dropped and stuff. The only thing I wish that was slightly different is that there is different like ornaments for the front of the hull, but then again, the hull has those sculpted on, so you know they, they would have had to sculpt the hull differently, and then produced probably another sprue with different facings on it, which obviously is not worth the time or effort. But I don't know. I'd quite like to see something less dwarfy and more more crackeny, I guess. So there's also the uh, the Arcanaut frigate, which. I mean, it just increases in scale and in size, doesn't it? So you've you've got the gun hauler, which is a cool little ship. And then you've got the frigate, which is a cool bigger ship. I love the guy up in the little crow's nest. That is a really cool touch. <laughs> Keeping a good a good lookout. It's yeah, the the kind of the bigger they get, the more imposing they become. This one, it has it has a presence. It has a it has a, a cool presence to it. 
and I like the uh, the back end of these as well. Actually, uh, it's not so much on the on the gun hauler because you don't have that much of like a like a, a hull, I guess, on that, or as much of a hull on that. The fact that you've got this actual little cabin and then this uh, this sheltered area in the back, I don't know. I, I just really like that that kind of. I don't know. Is it almost like submarine type look at the back there, maybe? In as much as any part of this can be compared to a real ship, given that it's a flying ship, and therefore doesn't need to be anything like a real one, really. He does look good, though. It does look good. And again, just just so many bits of like metal and 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 floaty sphere things that you can do so many cool things with. I've seen people use the uh, use the like larger. The larger floaty orbs for like admech walkers, which looks really cool. I mean, you stick three legs on it, and you've got one of the many adaptations of uh, of of War of the Worlds. And finally, there's the Ironclad, which is an absolute beast. There is nothing I don't like about this thing. It's just, it's just so, it's so absurd and over the top. I absolutely love it. It's just like just a massive flying ship. You've got this long kind of multi-propeller prop coming out the the bottom of it. Like two guns on either side, a massive turret on the front. It just looks it just looks so good. It just looks so good. I really I don't really want to know whose idea these were because they they need some sort of handshake or to be bought a drink or something. It's just a super cool vehicle. It's so good. Very, very silly, but it, yeah, just in the best way. Expensive though, expensive. These are like seventy quid. Uh, yeah, well, dead on seventy quid. Not like seventy quid. They are seventy quid. But then again, they are pretty chunky. They are pretty chunky models. The only thing that worries me about the about this is like this one in particular. The actual body of it is so... I, I don't know. It just feels... It's no different from like a Land Raider or anything like that where you've got like a big like a big panel of plastic, but I always get just uneasy seeing like a big panel of plastic because the the potential for disaster is, is a little bit there. It's all, it's all from building a monolith when I was a kid and finding it to be the worst experience in the world. It's kind of instilled a lifelong fear of big panels of plastic, but still, I mean, again, this is one. Where if you if you were feeling flush and wanted a box full of vehicle bits to do mad admet conversions and the like with, then you you can't really go all that wrong with this. But I think you have to be feeling a bit flush to drop seventy quid on a kit just for other conversions. Although having said that, I've done similar things in the past, not that much, obviously, but. Uh, I mean, as long as you use all the model, that's the that's the key thing, I think. As long as you use everything, just about, for the most part, anyway, it's, you know, everything is, is worth what you think it's worth. So, if you look at that and go, well, I'd use the body of the ship for this, and I'd use the big spheres for something else, I could totally put that gun on that thing over there. Why not? Why not go for it? You would scratch build yourself some sort of mental admech transport with the, with the body of the ship or just do it for another AOS faction of some kind really the possibilities are, are are limited only by your imagination so yeah that is the character on overlords it's a really solid range overall they look really good for just what they are being you know an AOS faction they are a really cool they're a really cool faction there's not there's not much in the way of variety but on the other hand it also means that everything in there is of like it's of a high standard, and it being a newer range, uh, of course, none of it has aged particularly badly because it's all relatively new. It's also just an absolute paradise for random steampunk bits. Cannot go wrong with them at all. They can be used to to turn all sorts of stuff into other stuff, especially for for uh, Age of Sigmar with like the the Cities of Sigmar stuff. You can create all kinds of weird and, and weird and wonderful. Uh, things to to match your chosen theme. Really solid range. Really like all of it. 
Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the character on Overlords in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games. If you use that, I get something for sending you that way. It's a nice way to support the channel because you were going to buy that stuff anyway. It's up to you. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.